Hi, everybody. Dr. Boz here, live from Florida Hurricane Center. Yes, I am coming to you from the uh, outskirts of Tampa as we have moved away from the water for this show. Uh, but I am here to tell you a really uh, personal story about weight loss that I told patients for years that the faster you lose weight, uh, the faster you'll gain it back. That the right way to lose weight is a steady decline of losing a pound a week. And the science behind sustainable weight loss, well, it's proved me wrong. That and the hundreds of patients who tried doing it my way <laughs> and did not succeed any better than I did. Let's take a look at a couple pictures here that'll show you what my weight loss, look, weight loss and weight gain look like. Uh, 2013 is the picture here, and I think I weighed about 130 pounds in this picture. Uh, let's do that over here, 130 pounds in that picture. And again, that was 10 years ago. I was about 41 years old. Now I'm 51. And what happened in my life was, well, some stress, lots of stress. And it took about uh, two years of one stressful event after the next, and now, you can see I have abdominal obesity. I have a lot more uh, fat in my face. My weight, I think, I didn't step on a scale very readily, but I think it reached almost 180 pounds uh, before I said, okay, let's, let's work on this. Let's lose the pound a week that I told my patients to do for years. Uh, over the next couple of years, I do a lot of things. That's a CrossFit board <laughs> in the background there. I had uh, lots of activities, but the weight, uh, maybe I shaved off a few pounds, but nothing worth writing home about. As the time went forward, the years, uh, the months turned into years, and by the time the end of 2016 happened, you're gonna see that number from the, you're gonna see that picture from the thumbnail. Yeah, again, central obesity was still there. I just could not get that fat to move. And then you fast forward to now, uh, where the weight is probably about 135 in this picture, maybe a closer to 140. Um, but uh, it is, yeah, it's definitely gone. And um, <laughs> the picture itself is a time where I was, <laughs> I moved to Florida and no, Florida didn't help me lose the weight. I think the weight started to come off uh, when I was doing several of the things we're gonna go through tonight. Uh, but you can see, I, I shot that alligator. <laughs> I shot that alligator with one shot. <laughs> and it's a little bitty alligator. I don't care. I was really proud that that's on my bucket list. And welcome to Florida. So we're going to talk tonight about what was happening and why people get stuck, just like I did, uh, in that weight loss cycle that doesn't let the weight come off. Uh, we stick around while we go through that. But uh, let me get back to the folks that are in the chat and checking in. Nice to see several of those happy, um, happy and familiar faces. Um, I will tell you that uh, the storm surge for this uh, hurricane is upon us. And I, my husband said, wife, you have got to leave the office. We, so we have a, an Airbnb because all the hotel rooms were booked and especially the hotel rooms that take dogs. <laughs> so we have Minnie with us uh, too. And this is an Airbnb that, well, that takes dogs. So I am at the end of my 53 hour fast uh, and my glucose and ketones are counting down here. I checked it a few minutes ago and yeah, glucose was 59 before, now it's 60 and ketones are 2.1. Um, I am, uh, the things I packed for, <laughs> for this sardine, uh, or for this, um, um, <laughs> this hurricane is, I threw in uh, two cans of sardines. I said, husband, bring the carnivore crisps. That's what I want to eat. Um, and then I have some pucker up that I'm going to have tonight too. Well, as I go through my little ritual here, we'll check those numbers at the end. Um, and you'll, they'll mean a lot more actually at the end going through some of the information we're going to go through tonight. So stick around. Uh, I have a few quick announcements and am happy to share, um, that on our website. If you go to the Dr. Boz favorites page right there and uh, click over here, uh, you will see that, um, I have a few things I want to make announcements for. 
Keto Palooza. Where is that one? Oh yeah, middle middle center. Keto Palooza. I will be speaking. That is October sixth through the eighth, and uh, it's in Louisville. <laughs> so if you have the opportunity to travel there, that's great. If not. Um, I think there's some online stuff. Great opportunity to really become part of a community there. And that's for one of my favorite people, so I'm excited about that. I do want to say one more thing. The, these, uh, this sales page for my son, and for all you moms who've ever had sons do something brave, I just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you to the people who have um, clicked on there, watched his little video, and given him a, a call or, or given him your number to give him a call. He is the first year salesman on a door-to-door -door salesman uh, this summer. And although he has a full ride through law school, his dad said, yeah, um, you're going to hate being a lawyer. You should, you should have a skill. <laughs> so he's, he has learned how to do sales this summer. And oh, it was very, um, very tough learning curve. But um, he's the newbie, so he gets the the highest amount of discounts for the next month. At the end of September, it closes, and I think we'll take it off the website here in a couple weeks. But uh, if you have any interest in what he's selling, please put your name down. And uh, as one mom who loves her son, uh, uh, thank you, thank you, thank you for the, those of you that did that. Um, there is one other thing I wanted to bring out here. Uh, no, I actually were saving that for next week. So yeah, the rest of those are the Dr. Boss favorites. Uh, we'll come back to some of those announcements. We do have... Um, uh, oh, I know what I was supposed to say. Um, in our in our store, in our shop, anybody who buys anything in the next two weeks, uh, we are talk. We have talked several weeks about being a cycle breaker, and we are putting a free s couple of uh, decals that you can use in a lot of places. Um, and we're kind of hoping to see we get pictures of where you put these things. Um, and it is, uh, I am a cycle breaker, just trying to help you identify with being part of our uh, movement of saying, how do you get out of the cycle of what we're going to talk about tonight um, and break the cycle for good. The series on that was great. Uh, I really uh, should write a book about it, actually. <laughs> uh, my husband keeps saying that. I'm like, no, no, I don't want to write a book right now, honey. But the, the steps and the reflection of what I've studied in patients really made it, makes a difference in... Um, helping to show the folks where uh, I would put their energy. And that, that blog summarizes all six of those uh, uh, points. And we, I really enjoyed the, the keto in the wild and how to, uh, how to break the cycle of chronic diseases. All right, so before we um, um, continue with our, um, with our little lesson here, mm. Um, our little Airbnb that we're at here, uh, you can see that the storm hasn't hit this place. I do want to uh, ask you to pray for the city of Tampa because they are have a history of not getting the, the hurricane to hit on their Tampa Bay, which is lovely. Uh, part of the reason I picked um, this um, uh, place to live is it's beautiful, but not known for its stormy side of Florida. And um, the high tide for, for Tampa will be at about 4 o'clock tomorrow morning. And that's also when the biggest water surge from this hurricane is supposed to hit. So just pray for the protection of the people in Tampa, um, the properties, and that, um, that we come together as a community to help uh, anybody who is, uh, is, does get in the way or does have difficulties through this. So... I'm happy to be a part of this community, and I'll take your prayers, but I'll also do my parts of service for after we leave this and go back to our home, hopefully without any damage. <laughs> um, all right, so let's finish this lecture because I have uh, I have oh you know a tough time sharing that my life it wasn't all is not perfect. I've got plenty of mistakes that I make, um, but losing weight was something that. Yeah, I didn't. Uh, I didn't do any better than you did it. I have the same problems. Um, that when I went to shoot this alligator, uh, you know, it, it, I still struggle with um, how well does um, how well do does weight loss um, kind of haunt you, and it doesn't forgive you if you have things like, oh, uh, I was doing really well, and then 
you know, two major funerals and a move across the country happened. Um, so the perception of what, pa what happens when I ask patients, what does it look like when you gain the weight? What's the history of your weight gain? And what patients say, this isn't my weight gain, but this is a, a common one from a patient, is that, yeah, doc, you know, I graduated high school around 150 and now I'm almost 240 pounds. And, you know, in, in this scenario, I have them at 45 years old. And you say, well, man, it took you 20 years to gain that one pound a year at a time. Is that what happened? Uh, and they really believe that. But when you go back and you look at pictures <laughs> or you look at um, any kind of medical charts, you'll see that that's not how the weight gain happens. In reality, weight gain happens when you have uh, when you have moments of stress, and not just one moment, but a season of stress. So in this example, I put, yeah, they started college. They put on about you know, 15 pounds and um, then they stabilized. Uh, and then a few years later, they had this new job that added a whole nother layer of stress. And then they got a few of the pounds off. You'll notice that slant goes down a little bit because then, well, they had a wedding <laughs> they were working hard for. It. And then they moved and then they had a baby and then, and then they had a parent that got sick. And the stresses happen during so times when, uh, when a wave of issues uh, come into their life and the skills to navigate those issues, well, one of the ways you can cope with that is to eat, <laughs> to drink alcohol. Uh, and those coping skills are, are wrapped around a bunch of, of hormone changes. Yes, of hormone changes. Uh, those surges in hormones and those overindulgence uh, uh, and then another surge in hormones from overindulgence, and then another surge of hormones and overindulgence, they add up over the course of a couple of weeks, uh, especially during times of high stress. And during that time, a metabolism breaks. Uh, a metabolism that is um, driven by hormones. So when I look at this image here, um, I, I take, take a, a, a very uh, close look at, yeah, that stress right there. So they go to college, lots of stress happens. Other things that are happening are they're not sleeping so well. Uh, they've got new foods that are coming in. And, and uh, before you know it, the end of that semester is up and they're like, oh my goodness, I put on the freshman 15 the first semester. And really in the background, what's happening is that these three hormones were doing some, not for the first time in their life, but um, insulin surged. Uh, insulin surged and so did their cortisol. Their stress levels went higher. Their storage for, um, for carbohydrates went higher. Uh, and then they got, they got hungry. The ghrelin really peaked. And as they went forward in time, um, the next stress happened. And here, uh, the, even during times of plateau where the, the stress went back to a, a rather normal level, they didn't decrease those hormones. Nobody showed them how to do that. Um, that uh, then another stressful thing happens, those, those hormones surge again, and they don't stay there forever, but the weight did. Uh, the hormones lock that in, and you'll notice if you scroll back and look at those pictures from 2015 to 2016, so the stress was really high in 14, 15, and 16, but the weight all came on, and then despite all of my a pound a week dance, uh, I wasn't losing any weight. I did not lose any weight. Uh, nothing sustainable anyway. And so again, another one comes and that, you know, that hormone surges and then it plateaus again. And then the hormone surges and then it plateaus again. And what's happening is it's not going back down to the baseline. You never got it back down there. You're like, well, doc, how do I do that? Yeah, how do you do that? <laughs> so the pound a week, it was wrong. And then the problem with losing weight gradually uh, is that yeah, um, that's not how our bodies work. Uh, that two pounds a week doesn't work for this, uh, these following reasons. That you smolder uh, on the edge of the chemistry shift. Uh, they never really, uh, th that chemistry went up, but they never went back down. They, they plateaued out of the stress and now they have a new normal. And despite starving uh, their metabolism or really trying to shift the chemistry, uh, they are shifting calories without the hormone shifts. Um, as the endocrine system and hormone don't reset, uh, the insulin now has a new level. The pancreatic cells that make that insulin, 
they make babies, meaning the, the insulin cells trade over. They get used to this new level of production of insulin. They are used to this kind of uh, baseline level of cortisol. Of uh, they, They've been missing uh, cholecystokinin and peptide YY. They have, they've been missing leptin. They miss the, the hormones that should be high and then they get used to the ones that are overly high and then it becomes normal. And as they replicate the cells within the body, the, those cells are used to this new normal, this, this new plateau here. And then they get used to it here. And then they got used to it up here. Um, as you look at, um, uh, let's see if I can get all those lines up there, sorry. Um, as you look at the other part that happens is um, they, their identity does not shift. Um, the stress happened, and in order to reset things, you really have to push uh, what I call is you have a pulse of your, of your uh, or press your metabolism, and then you have to pulse the hormones in order to reset them. Uh, another, there's another term for this called hormesis. We're gonna go through that in just a second. I like to point out them when we look at um, addiction, the, addi the addicts do a great job of when they really reset things, they get new friends, they get new hangouts, they get new pastime, they get new habits, they get a new identity. And when people skip this part, mm, doesn't work out so well. So let's just go through my weight loss. Again, there's a weight loss threshold that um, when, when I was putting on the weight, um, uh, this, this chart actually isn't going to show what I, when I put on the weight, it's going to show what it was like during that time where I couldn't get it to go away. When I put on the weight, my, sh my, um, my blood sugars were probably up here for about six months. Uh, just not because I had a baseline that high, but because I ate that much. Um, my ketones were on the floor. There was none of those. Um, and this area here, uh, is where I was trying to lose the weight. So I was eating a rather standard American diet. I was a doctor telling people how to eat high fiber and all the things that we talk about. But what was really dangerous was how I was just smoldering at on the edge of, of getting that hormone to surge. It wasn't until I was helping my mother uh, that we both had a plunge in our blood sugar and a surge in our ketones, and then we held that. And we held that until our body, uh, our, both of our bodies really acclimated. And then we stalled. Uh, the stall wasn't uh, terrible. We you know, lost weight. Mom got through the first uh, round of what happened with her cancer being all a nightmare. Uh, and that stall was fine with us. We didn't, we weren't really, I mean, weight loss wasn't why we, why we were doing it, but it was nice. What happens next, though, is that um, the the continuation was uh, I didn't know about the steps in the keto continuum yet. I was still living through how I figured all this out. So, looking at the weight loss, though, I hung out in this range. Um, I did not do this, um, and that's where I stalled. When I look at helping patients to do this, um, getting them to flip the coin, uh, raise those ketones, decrease the, um, the glucose, well, that's not an easy thing to do. Let's go through it. Um, the reality of weight loss is much like what the reality is of having, um, having a, uh, it's like the backward step of what happened when they gained it. And in the process of dropping weight, um, the plateau afterwards is something patients will write in and say, I have plateaued. I haven't lost a pound in three weeks. And I'm like, that's not a plateau. <laughs> that's not a plateau. Uh, a plateau, you can see here that um, I picked a February, September, February, and September. And the delta that they're really trying to lose here is about a 20 pound weight loss. This 20 pound weight loss can take about three weeks. It's not always 20 pounds, but it is often that 15 to 20 pounds of fat. When we remove that, they stabilize for several months afterwards. And when they are in, it doesn't have to be this long, but I have learned, especially for the people who've been in the chronic recycle, uh, the same bad habits, the same bad patterns, gain that weight, they want to lose it. I mean, they want to lose it like that. 
but it does not allow for enough stability. It is a journey to do this, especially uh, when you look at how the journey happened on the weight gain. Um, you're not gonna, you don't get to skip it. Um, what I like to show uh, folks is what's happening behind the scenes. Check this out. So as you look at the hormones that happen in the meantime, uh, this stress is what happened when we pushed their metabolism. And we said, all right, we are going to give you a new set of rules. Uh, and we get this really good report way down here. Now, it's not a weight loss, so don't look at that. This is what the hormones did. Uh, think of it as the stress hormones that are changing. Um, and then the stress hormones don't stay there. <laughs> you don't get to be that lucky. They plateau back up in that place where okay, which habits stuck? Um, and uh, often it's a several weeks of working and looking in the mirror and giving yourself some data points uh, before we can say, all right, are you ready for the next stress? And then they prepare, we get ready and they pulse and they push that uh, metabolic change in their system. And they say, look at how great it was. <laughs> yes, it was very good but your hormones don't work that way. Again, what's going on here is those cells in, I mean, I love the pancreas because it's easy to talk about insulin, but those cells in the pancreas are used to a certain level of cortisone, they're, or cortisol, they're, they're used to a certain amount of sleep, they're used to a certain amount of exercise, and when you stress the heck out of it, you're gonna get a response because you just changed the crap out of your hormones. But the cells that are replicating, you know, the generations that you've made in the previous chemistry set, they're not ready. I mean, they're going to still, they think you're fake. They think it's not sticking. So it takes a whole crop of these endocrine cells that are uh, filling with the right kind of hormones, that are producing the right kind of hormones, that now have the nourishment for the right kind of hormones, and that their production of them becomes stable. And that's where, yes, the weight was stable. And to pulse it again, again, we do a really good job when we're pulsing. And people say like, I want to stay here. I'm like, no, that's not how it works. Uh, this is again called hormesis. We push the hormones uh, and then we stabilize. We do not revert back up to the big habits you had here, um, but those, uh, those uh, hormones really do make a difference. Um, so those are the ones that are the stress hormones. How do you get them down? But the other part are your satiety hormones. And these satiety hormones are a really big deal when it comes to how you feel, how your brain is working, how well you can shut off hunger. And I'll tell you, it's almost like um, the weight, the, the stress hormones in reverse. You, you pulse them and they don't stay that high. You pulse them again and they don't stay that high. Pulse them again and they don't stay that high. Don't stay that high. Uh, I mean, what happens there is each time you pulse, it is helping those stress hormones uh, to reduce and the satiety hormones to raise. Both areas of the body, and there are multiple areas of the body, uh, the are are um, looking at how well they're supplied. Uh, we know that in the state of a ketogenic diet where we are restoring your cholesterol supply chain. And for you newbies, that may sound like a terrible thing, but what comes out of cholesterol uh, are all these hormones. And that hormone improvement uh, begins with um, the, the consumption of fat, but it's all of these hormones that really do reset I like to draw special attention to this. Uh, cortisol, known for being a hormone that has a high purr, <laughs> like the, the hum of making hormone, the higher that gets, the harder it is to lose weight. Um, and when you look at people under chronic stress, the people who are having these chronic medical problems, the total supply of cortisol is actually um, depleted within their body. The storage is empty. Uh, the reason why is it comes from cholesterol, and that fat circulation is very, it's off. They don't get to, um, they don't get to uh, have that steady supply because of uh, several things we've gone through in this channel. The high insulin, uh, that chronic glucose state, the rapid succession of storing fat in those fat cells and not using it like they're supposed to. Uh, what I always like to point out is that testosterone, uh, aldosterone, uh, uh, estradiol, progesterone, um, and especially your vitamin D, all are linked to a way better mental health per function and performance. Um, when we look at um, the other uh, places where um, 
the those stress hormones reset the supply of those fat-based hormones needs to be replenished and many times that's what's happening in that uh, that plateau phase when it comes to satiety these are the things that should get better you should have an improvement in your leptin peptide yy cholecystokinin is what talks to your gallbladder to make it squeeze and it is a sign of feeling full and satiated uh, it comes you know it talks to your liver if you don't have a gallbladder but it's really important for the gallbladder and then these little guys are not little anymore. They really are restored. Uh, what happens with uh, ghrelin is it decreases, but more importantly, what happens with insulin is it decreases. And as insulin decreases, the cortisol, although you have a better supply made, the cortisol stress is not stimulated to, uh, to flood into your body as much. And that, uh, that is a sign of where you're going to empty up the empty out the fat cells, you'll have the, the proper chemistry to do that. Uh, when I look at, um, you know, again, my own weight, my own weight gain and weight loss, um, you know, this season of life was, um, uh, it was hell. <laughs> I'm supposed to be this educated on medical, uh, medical, uh, survive, you know, difficult problems and I can't get my own weight to come off. It wasn't until I really surged the hormones of the ketones going up, the glucose going down. And then when I got into a plateau, well, that's where this uh, keto continuum was written saying, oh, you have to do this in steps. Uh, and when they do that, it needs to be a step and hold, a step and hold. That um, the three major rules for people who have had sustained weight loss, um, number one, uh, we know that... Um, they have an intense start. Uh, it's not an accident that the 21 day course, the one that opened today, um, or will be opening, yeah, open today, uh, it is 21 days long. When we look at people who lose weight, they have a very pressured, stressful interval of time. Uh, those 21 days are, um, well, the best 21 days in my, uh, I do it twice a year. So in my six months, those 21 days are when I push my metabolism to the next level. That mental and emotional preparedness for weight loss, well, I've been counting down and I look forward to this. It's truly my favorite three weeks of the, of the half year. Um, but uh, the expected uh, intense phase, they expect the intense phase to end. That really, we um, you know, we are super excited to offer this for a third time. I, I know that a year ago I was saying I may never do this again, and that was not a lie. I did not know how impactful and how truly helpful. Well, selfishly, it is to me. I I do such a better job of saying, oh, I, that's what perfect is like. That's what a good season of, of a ketogenic diet is like. But more importantly, the examples of how well patients were able to say, oh, doc, I've been seeing you for three years. Why didn't you tell me this? And I'm like, I swear to God, I did. <laughs> I swear to God, I did. But it wasn't me who got them to change. It was a classmate. It was someone else who was able to say, all right, for three weeks, we are going to push your metabolism. The satiety uh, of hormones will stabilize after that plateau. That identity um, it needs to have, what is your new identity? What and I look at this for me specifically, what one thing am I really working on? Uh, and can I kill that old identity? Can I adopt this new identity for the rest of my life? And I will tell you, there is no better time for a tribe, which is something we are very proud of. That really does make the difference of, are you in a place where other people are pushing themselves to? Um, pick one thing to change during, uh, or one thing that you're going to keep stable during that plateau sign. If you ask to change all those things and they look for that rapid weight loss that I pointed out in the slide earlier, like that's what they want. They want to lose 50 pounds uh, in the six months. And although that happens, uh, that's often what happens in people who need to lose 150 pounds. Uh, and then the next 20 pounds come at intervals where they push their pressed metabolism. Um, one area uh, of place where they hold after that intensity and then adhere, adherence fades with every weight loss plan. So to be able to push and then find that stability, push and then find that stability is what we have learned is um, a very common place. Um, I've shown this slide before and my, my team makes fun of me because it is really like the reality of weight loss is there's a whole bunch of chemistry that's going on in the background. There's a whole bunch of endocrine things that are changing, the way your brain hears from the rest of your body, the, what, what, the supply of all these hormones I was talking about. And um, 
And people will ask me, I want to go in and get all these labs checked. And I'm like, did you see that line? Did you see how quickly it changes? This is a hormone. It will pulse up and down. And it's a lot of your money that leaves your pocket when you check those hormones. Don't do that. Look at the other things that we measure. Uh, when we say how well it takes adaption or how long it takes adaption after you change the chemistry, and that plateau needs to stay there until you're emotionally ready and you're chemically ready. And we are, um, we are super thankful for the people who've had incredible testimonies uh, where they said, yes, I did lose fat. I prefer and the preferential fat loss, uh, the protection of their muscle, and that they rapidly lose the weight and then they adapted. They found a lifestyle afterwards that matched. That um, the reality of weight loss is these steps. And it's not an accident that on these slides I said, hey, guess it, when it is that I offer um, this uh, course. Um, that tonight we are, uh, we did open the, the, um, the course of, uh, for our 21 day and it's my favorite season. It's where I get to be the doctor again. Uh, and although it's medical advice of my lawyer, make sure I say, no, it's no, I'm not a doctor. I'm not your doctor. But I do get to teach you what I taught my patients. The curriculum inside the, the 21 day course, um, these are the five modules that we go through. Um, I did cover how we got sick in the um, master class. And although it's a little bit advanced, I, I find that um, when you see the problem, watch what happens when we undo it. And teaching you how to do that, doing that in community has been, well, it's, my, it's my favorite thing. Uh, that the cart is open. Uh, we opened it earlier this afternoon and um, I'll just go through again what it is that we are doing. 21 days uh, of uh, is how long this lasts. The class will start on September 11th. Um, and we have uh, 15 days of personalized coaching supervised by me that you will be in a small group. We have many small groups that uh, were formed in these uh, in this 21 day metabolic kick that uh, you they they formed their own group they continued in that support we, we have nothing to do with it uh, we encourage them to do this um, but we pass the baton to them and of course that's the right budget there's no price that's your that's your zoom link that you have to pay for but that's about it and and when you look at that responsibility passed to them that's where success comes from um, that. Um, we know that the real-time feedback from the Keto Mojo dashboards has been amazing. That was one of the key components that I just can't thank that company enough for really responding to what I asked them to do in this. Um, in this, um, that we do a lot of teaching for brain stuff. This is not a lot of psychology happening inside that classroom. It is a very intimate course. It is live. It is not uh, pre-recorded. Uh, my sessions go live every morning at 8.30 Eastern time, and those folks on the Pacific Coast have a tough time getting up that early, but um, if that part is recorded, they can watch it later in the day or maybe even the next day. But the classes that we put you in, they are not recorded. It is on purpose uh, meant for you to, um, to be live and in person, and, and we don't want it recorded because we don't want that shared any other place but in a live uh, community. And, you know, I will uh, be the first to say that um, it's our flagship um, uh, flagship course. This is where uh, I do a lot of free things here on this channel and for people in, uh, in my support group. Uh, this is the place that, that funds uh, what we do the rest of the year. And I couldn't be more proud of the product. Um, uh, as much as I have had lots of high hopes of getting my clinic back to what it was prior to the pandemic, I am... I'm worried God doesn't have that in the plans for me, but I know he wants me to do this. I know this is the place I'm supposed to be. And we opened the cart earlier today, and I, I did that on purpose because I knew there was a few newbies that really wanted one of the seats. And um, I, I, I think we're at um, 30 uh, people that have signed up in the last two hours. Uh, and I think 20, 22 of them are previous students. The reason a previous student would want to come in and do this is they said, oh my gosh, it changed so much about what happened in my metabolism. We're going to get to your questions here in just a second, but I, I really want to show you one more thing before I, I, I go to those questions. Because 
it, 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 it makes me emotional when I was reading this earlier, like, wow, I just can't believe it makes that big of a difference. Um, but if you go to this 21 day and you go to the bottom, the, um, the reviews of what the people said, of what patients said, like this changed them. This was uh, the kind of care that they were hoping for inside the exam room, but the doctors didn't have time. And I've been that doctor. And to read these reviews at the bottom of the sale of this page is, um, it's truly my favorite part of um, the reflection time is how much this uh, is what I was trying to do in my clinic. And I don't think I could do a better job one-on-one. -on -one. I mean, I know I can't, I've, I've failed in the past and um, they didn't change nearly as quickly as they did. Um, that the price is, uh, it is the Cadillac price. I'm looking for people who are motivated. I'm looking for, for people who want to do this. And that preparation for weight loss is a pulse of your metabolism. That's what I'm going to do to mine. That's what everybody on my team is going to do. That's what my beautiful coaches are all priming their brain, body, and lives for is to help guide you through this. Um, so I look forward, this uh, sales cart opens tonight. Um, it closes as soon as we have all the seats filled for the number of coaches we have. Uh, we think that's gonna be somewhere around 250, um, maybe 270. Um, and I'm nervous about how quickly it's gonna fill up. So if you are at all on the fence about this, you're gonna wanna click that button sooner than later. Uh, let's go over to those questions and get um, your, uh, see what folks have to say. Uh, let's see here. There we go. All right. So Paul writes in and said, do I have to have a continuous glucose monitor to take this class? No, I wear one of these and I talk a lot about them, but that's a new tool that I've been, uh, using to teach folks. Uh, it is not necessary for the, the course. It is a fantastic tool and something we're continuing to uh, problem solve here on the on the channel to get access for as many people as possible and I am I'm yeah you do not need a continuous glucose monitor to be part of this um, all right so let's go to um, uh, go back to that where with that one uh, here we go sorry uh, Sam writes in and says what supplies do I need for the 21 day class um, well the the most important one is a good attitude <laughs> that you are ready to do this change um, we do ask that you have a meter um, and that you have some strips because we are going to be checking your glucose and ketones. The type of meter is not important as long as it checks glucose and ketones. Um, the rest of it we teach you along the way. And I think, um, I mean, the app that we use is, uh, is free and... Um, I mean, you need to do what you're doing now. You have, have a Zoom camera. Uh, it's a fantastic course, but it's also very um, uh, uh, designed for people who are really trying to give that pulse of their metabolism and then settle back down. We want you to take this information, teach your family, teach your friends. Uh, you do not need to be a doctor to do this, but I do think you need a good tribe in order to change the behavior. And that's what we are really trying to um, to put put together for you. Uh, we go through the supply list uh, within the first, uh, di you know, first day of getting started. So there's a full and very organized list that I is not off the top of my head, but the most, the most significant one is that they need enough strips to get through the three weeks and um, they need a meter. So go to the Dr. Bob's favorites page, guaranteed the cheapest place you're going to get those. I work very closely with those companies and I love that they see our support for them as we do that. Okay, let's go back to this button here. Cynthia says, can you, be an, can you do this as a keto newbie? That is a great question and something that took me by surprise last year. Uh, when I was uh, designing this course, I thought people that would wanna take it were other clinicians. <laughs> other doctors, other, they, I had so many people say, can I come shadow you? Can I come shadow you? And I'm like, that's ridiculous. I, at then I was living in, you know, like I have this small clinic and I don't have a big patient population anymore. I'm like, no. Um, so it was, that was one, one. And then I had a bunch of health coaches saying, how can I, how can I be certified to do it like you do? And I'm like, I don't want to do a certification. <laughs> Come see patients with me. Come be in class with me. Watch what I do with them. And, you know, there are the second and third week, um, uh, I do cases and they are 
I mean, they're puzzle, they're fun for me. I love them. Uh, and they are so teachable to the rest of the room. Uh, and so when we launched the course, the, so the first time we did it, you know, we had 300 students before we knew what we were doing. Uh, maybe it was 250. It was a lot. Um, and we were just, we were kind of building the plane as we launched this course. The second time around, I didn't realize how many, we had like 60% of the room was new to keto. And we are like, wow. And they did so well. Oh my gosh, I wish I would have started with this outline, with this plan. And um, they obviously did not master all of it on the first go around, but I compare it to a, a one room schoolhouse where you know how the second grader in a one room schoolhouse sees the fourth grader that's up there doing math? And you know, the second grader is doing you know, times tables and learning math um, for the first or so, you know, for at a very primary level. But that fourth, fourth grader, well, they have letters in their math. And although the second grader does not know why the heck they are putting letters in their math, they now know that you can. You can put letters in your in your math. And I just see that happening over and over again, that that ex experiential learning is first to be introduced, that it's possible. And then to watch somebody that's your, your colleague in your class doing it, and sometimes they fail and they have a terrible time, but many times they, they stumble and then they do well. And it's in that journey. It's why this class is live. We want to be there in step with you. Each of the coaches gets a little healthier when they do it. Uh, each of the uh, coaches said, I couldn't believe how much uh, I learned from, be from listening to the newbies. So the answer, Cynthia, is yes, keto newbies can do this. It is intense, so just please read the copy on the page. I have a couple of rather long videos just telling you about what we're trying to do. Uh, and so take the time to read it so you don't, um, uh, we, we haven't had one student fail who joined the class. Meaning, it, as long as they came and showed up, I mean, we had a couple people give us their money and never show up. And we tried like heck to find them, but they just never showed up. I'm like, but anybody who showed up, th they all, they all succeeded. That's crazy. That's crazy success. And I can't do that alone in my clinic. I need the people in the, the they have to be in the vortex. They have to be in the place where other people are changing the behavior as well. Um, let's go back to that, those questions. Uh, okay, so Cynthia, great question. So is there a discount for the course of people who've taken in the past? The answer is no. Uh, we've tried, uh, we tried discounts last year that did not work out so well because uh, we had people thinking that the class was $200, but uh, we're pretty confident based on uh, some market research that we're going to fill up. Um, we also, uh, we do a lot of things for free. And this course <coughs> is our flagship on how we get to do all those things for free. So we are, um, we're thankful for the course. Uh, there is not a discount for past students. Uh, all right, let's go to, uh, Christina says, is it safe to consume a decent amount of MCT oil on a daily basis long-term? Well, that's a decent amount. Uh, 30 pills, 30 to 45 pills. Well, that, um, that, that study has been done, uh, that they were on dementia patients. The dementia patients took 30 to 45 grams of MCT daily, and they had no ill effects. Um, of course, the people that stayed in the study were the ones that did not get diarrhea from taking that much MCT. So no, it raises your ketones. It's a, it's a fat source. Um, I mean, it's the same uh, uh, conversation that people have. Does that mean it's going to um, cause me uh, to have high cholesterol, to have, you know, th there's, there's other questions built into that, into that, but I don't think um, I, there's, there's no safety concerns when it comes to the consumption of it. Um, all right, my gym has a sauna. Uh, Sue writes in, my gym has a sauna. Excuse me. But they keep it turned off. Hmm. I wanna know what settings should I put it on so I can use it. <laughs> all right, you want the temperature in a sauna to be 180 degrees. You heard that right, 180 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, so that's not a little bit of, of temperature. That is a big temperature shift. So Sue, um, the, you know, I'll tell you, when it comes to um, 
the uh, the best advice I have for saunas, and I'm going to do um, a sauna thing here. Hold on. Let's do this. I'm going to go back over here. Um, website here. Um, if you go to Dr. Boz Favorites, so over here, if you push on Dr. Boz Favorites, um, you will see this right here. I would have you click here. Uh, I have one of these in my house now, and I've tried many of these. This is what I've landed on, and I'm doing uh, a video on this, on what, what I've learned, what I care about, what I'm tracking. Um, my support group in Tampa asks me these questions all the time. Uh, in fact, in the preparation for this hurricane, the one thing my husband and I both said is, make sure the sauna gets put in a place where it's not going to get destroyed. Uh, we love it. So it is a bit of an investment, but my gosh, it is, it's amazing. And it heats up like that. Uh, the downside and the reason why your gym probably doesn't have the sauna turned on is it's expensive to heat it when nobody's using it. And it takes a long time to get it to that 180. So I have had a heck of a good uh, luck with um, that, the sauna that's in that uh, Dr. Boz favorites. And I've talked to the owner, I've talked to, I've talked to a lot of people, but that, uh, that company and how it, it heats up quickly. It's not, you know, $15,000. It's not a remodel of your house. Um, I, I really, really find that is uh, worth it. So I, I'd consider looking into that if I were you. All right, let's go back to the next couple of questions. Uh, I have lost 80 pounds down to high school weight. Uh, having difficulty losing the last five to 10 on my abdominal area. I am OMAD, about 80 grams of carb, about 80 gram carb meals, fast weekly for 36 to 90, uh, 96 hours. A friend suggests I stop fasting uh, temporarily to confuse the metabolism. Okay, so me metabolic confusion is exactly what we were talking about tonight. That's not what's happening. It's that the metabolism is very difficult to measure. Uh, that the, the hormones that are happening in the background have a pulse and a relax, and a pulse and a relax. Um, there's two videos that I would push you to watch. Um, one of them is inside the course that I'm offering, but the other one is... If you bought the online course that um, that came out during the pandemic, there is one lecture at the end of it that's an hour long, and it talks about the key to fasting when in a ketogenic state, especially if you've been around the sun a few times and you've had this major shift in weight loss, that there are some consequences for, for pushing the body too hard, um, and, and you can measure them, <laughs> you can look at them, this is not my you know, whimsical idea, but I would highly suggest you watch that. It's an hour long video at the end of there. It's also inside this course and it looks at fasting uh, in a, on a ketogenic state that I think you'll see the answer to what you're doing wrong there. Um, all right, Lorraine writes in and says, does the Dexcom G7 need to be worn on the back of the arm? No, you can put it in any subcutaneous fat area. Uh, I have plenty of uh, subcutaneous fat there on the back of my arm. It's also a place that doesn't seem to get in the way. I know folks that do a lot of, um, uh, they have those bras that you take off over their arms. They can tend to catch it. Uh, the abdomen is pretty good too. Um, it's anywhere you want to, anywhere you have skin that you can put uh, a little, that's not going to get caught on something like your clothing. So nope, you don't need to put it there. Uh, Vicky says, will steroids knock you out of ketosis? To, took a bad fall on a hamstring and was given steroids, having trouble getting back. Yeah, uh, Vicky, I will tell you right now that um, when people have a, um, a time where they took in steroids, uh, they took in essentially cortisol is what that's from. Um, they took in the cortisol. The cortisol was uh, now at this higher level. And then they say, I, I just can't seem to get down. They need to push. Uh, I would, I, I, if you want to do this on your own, go get the Keto Continuum Workbook and find where it is that you're living. Um, and when you're in that, you need to push that Keto Continuum and put that, that pulsing of your uh, of your hormones, that hormesis, and then you need to plateau. Uh, that um, you're in that same place that I was at when I couldn't lose the weight. That the you'll you'll put you'll have pushed things and shifted it just enough that the regular stuff is not going to get you to lose the weight. Uh, you're going to have to push and pulse. 
All right. Well, I will tell you, I'm going to check my numbers. I actually promised myself I would not forget that here at the pandemic. Uh, and I'm dying to eat my my food. I'm not dying, but I'm, I'm telling myself that. I, uh, I check these because I do want the message to be clear that uh, that live show isn't uh, that live class that I'm about to start. It isn't an accident that people show up there in way better health than they were last time. They've been doing this with me. They've been watching along. They see that this is not, um, that I'm not doing this kind of. I am doing this with you. Um, and, uh, oh, I hope that strip isn't bad. I'm going to have to walk. Oh, uh, can you get me one of the, the blue strips? Uh, so I have the glucose strips, but the ketone strip is not, not working. So uh, the glucose is... 45. Uh, I can tell you because my ketones are flying high. Um, I'll get it. Um, yeah, um, that is not the first time my, my glucose has been in the 40s. Mm. Mm. There you go. Let's check it. And my family is ready for me to get off this live so that they can speak. <laughs> uh, that the hurricane uh, school was canceled earlier today and so they've been packing up the house and getting ready for uh, moving and then um, I sat in the area where well where the internet was good. Okay counting down ketones here we go. Uh, so I have glucose and ketones. I will also say, look at the, uh, uh, I'm looking forward to all of you that are coming back to the class. Uh, yeah, okay, ketone 6.1, I just knew I was flying high. I can feel it. Um, yeah, that's a good pass. <laughs> Definitely an autophagy. Uh, a, a sincere thank you to all the people that have supported me uh, in doing this, that um, when I rolled the dice last year and asked you to, to join me, uh, I didn't know if anybody would sign up. And not only did you trust me, you joined me, and thankfully, your health is better. So I'm looking forward to a new set of students and uh, walking through these next uh, few weeks with the coaches that also trusted me and rolling the dice for making a difference in healthcare outside of the exam room. I will see you in the course. Uh, uh, check those emails, and I'll be telling you the updates for the sales of our flagship program at the Dr. Boss channel. See you next week.